Okay, so this video is going to be a bit disjointed, but now flash forward possibly three years later um, to the second year of high school in this this uh, Christian school that I went to with my friend Steve. Um, yeah, I'd been to the first camp the first year, and that was a low-key type deal. The second camp, however, I mean, I had a good time at that first camp, so I was for sure keen to go to the second one. The second camp, however, was a bit different. That was when they really started piling on the on the pressure on the kids. I mean, that seemed to be the plan. To be honest, I don't think we really did that many activities at that camp. I can't really, I don't really have any fond memories of doing anything particularly great apart from, yeah, my, I mean, my memories have basically been, you know, dominated by this, the, the, the three nights. We were there for three nights. What happened at this camp was that they had this, this special speaker. He was an American guy, so you can just imagine. He was an American guy. Uh, I won't mention his name. He's probably, you know, been convicted of God knows what by now, you know, like, like a lot of those crazy guys are. But yeah, this American guy, he was the special guest speaker to, to the, um, to the school camp. Yeah, so after dinner, every night we'd go up to this big hall and we'd all sit down on the floor and all the teachers were there, all of my teachers, you know, my English teacher, my math teacher. Until then, all of the, all of the teachers had been kind of quite soft about all this kind of stuff about hell and Jesus and repent and you'll go to avoid hell and that kind of thing. That was my impression. But at this uh, particular camp, this particular three-day um, retreat, they kind of knuckled down a bit as far as drilling that kind of stuff into us goes. I, I noticed a change in all of the, the teachers. They were all there. Each night they were there sort of around the perimeter. And all the kids sort of sat on the floor. It was a gymnasium, I guess you'd say, like a hall. And, yeah, this this guy, this, this speaker, he got up and started the first night uh, by saying, um, by describing the crucifixion. Yeah, so he described in in as much gory detail as he could, as he possibly could, uh, what Jesus went through uh, when he was nailed to the cross. And yeah, it was quite, you know, very graphic. And I mean, these these are you know young kids, you know. These are like you know 13, 12, 13, 14 year old kids, I guess that were that he was telling this stuff to. I mean, it's the kind of stuff that, that you wouldn't watch in a movie, um, that's for sure. Like, he was explaining um, the process, he was explaining, you know, the nails going in. He was explaining He was explaining that the nails going through the, um, the hands is a fallacy. The nails didn't go, they went down further through the wrist, below the hand, because the bone would hold the, the weight of the body up better. If you put them through the hand, that would just tear through. And the, and the person would fall down and, I don't know, possibly escape, I don't know. But yeah, so according to him, no, the nails went through the wrist uh, between the two uh, bones of the, of the forearm. And that is how the person who was crucified was held to the cross. And... And that was pretty much it. They were just nailed to the cross, you know, and left up there. And they had a little platform. Um, this is all what this guy was explaining. They had a little platform always at the bottom of the cross where you could put your feet. And that wasn't to, uh, according to this guy, that wasn't sort of really for any benefit to the, to the person who was being crucified. That was 
to allow the person to breathe because apparently according to this guy I don't know this is just what I remember according to this guy if you're stretched out like that and and the whole weight of your body is pulling on your arms you can't really breathe properly but if you have a little platform that you can push yourself up and down on uh, you're able to breathe and so that kind of that is kind of like a cruel way of prolonging the the death of the person on the cross yeah which could last for days apparently according to this guy and yeah so it was a horrible terrible thing to explain to 12 13 14 year old kids uh, but yeah so this, that's what this guy explained to us um, that that's what crucifixion was that's what Jesus went through and then it got to, you know, Jesus went through that for us. He did that for us. Which kind of makes you think, well, what about all the other people that were crucified, you know? What did they do it for? But then I think, I think he kind of explained that it was worse for Jesus because he was accepting all of the sins of everyone in the world and all future sins too, I guess. And, um, yes, yeah, so that was just this gruesome thing. And then the second night, he sort of took that first night's um, progress, I guess you'd say, in scaring all the kids, to say that uh, that's what hell is. Hell is like that. Um, that's what you'll get if you go to hell. That much suffering, that much pain, forever. And so I think it must have been the third night that he did that <clears throat> that high pressure thing where um, he's up the front or the, at least there's some guy up the front playing the guitar like this nice lovely sad type desperate type guitar songs about God and Jesus and he's up there saying does anyone want to come up and reaffirm or you know be born again if you've never have had that happen reaffirm their faith uh, and their love for Jesus and reaffirm that they want to go to heaven and etc etc and of course um, you know the goody goody two shoes Christians kids they were the first ones to go straight up there up to the front and uh, my friend Steve he was up there with his brother very quickly they didn't want to get left out obviously and um, yeah, I was kind of like sitting there, and yeah, this whole thing had really scared me. This whole camp had really scared me. I, they, they had really, they had really worn me down. They had really chipped away at, at at my precious belief in a nice, friendly, supportive God that I had. Uh, I, I really was pretty much broken, a broken kid, which is you know really disgusting that they can do that kind of thing to kids. You know, this kind of high pressure religious retreats where they take you away from your, you know, it's like a cult. They take you away from your normal surroundings and leaving you no choice but to submit, you know. That's really what, what it is. Um, that's why they do it at, at the camp and, not, and don't try to do it at the school. Because if they do it when you're away from your family and everything else, uh, you've got nothing to fall back on. So you have to submit. And that's what I did. Um, I didn't stand up by myself though there was a kid next to me yeah there was a kid next to me his nickname was Ernie Ernie was his nickname and I said Ernie do you want to go up and he was like I could tell that he wanted to go up as well he was just sort of sitting there being really quiet because it was like by that time it would have been really late and dark and most of the people that were up on the stage were already there and um, I said to Ernie, uh, you want to go up? And he's like, yeah, I do, yeah. And so me and Ernie, we walked up together. We were like one of the last people to walk up, you know, to the front. There weren't that many people up the front. I mean, there were probably, like compared to the number of kids sitting on the floor who just sat there and just said, no, I'm not going. Um, there were probably like 25, you know, kids, maybe, yeah, 25 kids probably at the most up the front. So. This is, this is a pretty big thing for me to do, but I mean, when you think about it, it wasn't, 
I mean, they weren't asking that much of you, but what it was was standing up in front of all your class, all, all the school, you know. You kind of, it's kind of like making an idiot of yourself to prove yourself to God. It's just weird and really shameful that kids are ever put through that. And it was a shame that I was put through that because it destroyed a lot of um, my, happy, my happiness, I guess, for probably two or three years afterwards. I was kind of like really screwed up for a long time after that in the head. Um, I mean, people say they're screwed up over religion, but really what it comes down to is they're scared of going to hell. Uh, on the other hand, they think it's ridiculous that no God would ever do that. And so you, you're, you're stuck in between this, you know, should I believe it and just put up with it and accept it and then hope I don't go to hell? Or should I reject it? You know, like I know I, 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 I should, you know, it's, it's not right, you know. And so yeah, I guess I get yeah, I guess I should tell you about going up onto the stage. We walked up and it felt really weird to be walking up to this small group of ultra religious kids up there. And and up the front they were all sort of gathered around each other. They were sort of hugging each other, putting their hands on each other. Um, and this was just the kids. There were the adults were sort of either up on the stage or around the edges, but the, I think it was really just the kids that were up the front that were the ones that had decided to go up and prove their, you know, their love for Jesus and God and everything, reaffirm, be born again in some cases, I guess, for the first time. And I remember being up there, and I think Ernie he sort of disappeared into with another group, and I kind of was just, I was just there kind of by, by myself, and um, just sort of hanging around, feeling uncomfortable. And you know, up on the stage, the the principal of the school was playing his guitar and singing like slow sort of lullaby Christian songs. And um, yeah, so that was the scene basically. It was all dark and you know, they, they, they made the, the, the effects really nicely with the lights on the front and just the single guy with the guitar singing and, and yeah, kids, you know, mulling around the front of the stage, the ones that had come up to the front. And they were all sort of putting their hands on each other and some of them were talking to each other, and then I realized that some of them were like praying with each other, like kids, you know? 12, 13, 14 year old kids sort of, can I pray for you, and that kind of thing. It's just weird. And I, and I remember later thinking, I've never felt more alone than when I walked up onto that stage, you know? Christianity is supposed to be uh, a brotherhood of Christians, you know, where you feel where you feel like you're at home, like a, a family, you know, where you feel together with your, your fellow believers. But I never felt so alone in my life standing up in front of that stage, you know, in the dark with those other people. Yeah, and um, I remember uh, another guy came over, Xavier, he came over. Xavier, he was kind of like a short, chubby guy, like complete sort of nerd. I mean, not even smart, the kind of nerd that's not even smart at school, that kind of kid. And um, I remember him coming over to me and saying, has anyone uh, prayed for you yet, Ben? And I said, no, no. And he said, I'll pray for you. Oh, thanks, baby, thanks for that. And he sort of faced me, put his head down, put his hand on my shoulder, and I put my head down. And he just sort of, you know, had a little prayer, like he said, stuff like, uh, please God, please, you know, accept, please accept uh, Ben's, you know, reaffirmation tonight, blah, blah, blah. And then Xavier started talking in tongues. He started going on with some sort of jibber jabber, you know, at the end of the prayer. I'm like, what the hell? But I, I think I think I I knew what was going on. I'd heard of that before, but I thought, oh, this is real, and it, this is actually something that Xavier's going to do. Like, does he actually think he's actually doing it? And he was just saying, "Haba laba laba laba," that kind of stuff, you know, just the stuff you hear on the <clears throat> in those crazy religious churches. People get up and think they're talking in tongues. And yeah, that was that. And I just sort of hung around and felt really uncomfortable and. 
didn't feel at all like I was, you know, you know, any place I should be. But yeah, it was something that I wanted to do because I was just sick of constantly being hounded, mainly about Jesus. You know, this was the first time that I'd really ever submitted in my mind to to Jesus. You know, this is the first time that I'd ever that I'd ever thought, right, I'm going to try it. I'm actually going to try it. I mean, I've been, I've heard so much about it that you must accept Jesus into your heart, all this stuff. Oh, okay, fine, I'll try it. You know, I'll do it. Fine, you've won. And um, yeah, I'd never felt so defeated I, in my life. I remember, I remember after a while, you know, it must have been so late at night, and the principal sort of snapped out of his little meditative state that he was singing and you know playing his guitar up on the stage, and he sort of said, "Look, uh, it's getting late. If, ever, if anyone wants to go to bed, you know, you're welcome to go to bed now." And anyone here from the from in front of the stage too if you want to go to bed you know because he's obviously got his curfew to think about he can't keep the uh, kids up too late or they'd be running home with stories heaven forbid you know they stay up too late let alone screw up their little brains into you know believing in this crazy crazy um scary world out there of hell and the afterlife and yeah, so I, I took my chance and I went straight away to the room. Went straight to the room, walked straight there. It was another dormitory with bunk beds. Thankfully, no one was in there. I, sorry, I, I, I tell a lie. There was one other guy, maybe two guys sleeping in the room. Thankfully, they were asleep. Um, and I walked into the bathroom because all these dorms had a little ensuite bathroom. And looked at myself in the mirror and... Uh, I look, I look terrible. I mean, I, I, I could hardly look at myself. I was so ashamed of of what I had uh, let myself become, of giving in to these people, giving in to this idea of a um, tyrannical god, an evil god, really, uh, the, the kind of god that would let people suffer for eternity just for, you know. You know, just on technicality, really, of not believing in some specific thing. You know, it's just crazy. And so I'd, I'd sort of given into that, and they'd beaten me. I'd, I'd held out for a long time. You know, I'd held out with my precious little happy belief in God um, that I'd had since a kid. You know, and they they crushed it. They really had. And I was um, distraught. And it looked as if I'd sort of been crying, which I didn't realize I'd been crying. And they weren't the tears of happiness of fucking, you know, being saved or anything. They were just fucking tears, you know. I was just, I was just sad for myself and what I'd, what I'd become. I was so ashamed of myself. So ashamed of myself, I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror in the bathroom. And that was that. And um, the next day, <coughs> I remember... Yeah, this must that must have been the third night that they had that high pressure thing. Because the next day I remember we had a morning a morning gathering. And um, Yeah, we went along to this morning gathering and um, they said uh, you know they sat us down in the gymnasium again and they said um, all the people that uh, came up to the stage last night I want you to do one last thing for me. I want you to stand up and prove that you really mean it. And this was the, this was the uh, special guest, the American guy, um, uh, you know, giving his last little speech about the whole thing. And so I, I stood up. I stood up pretty quick. You know, everyone else, all the other kids that had gone up last night to the stage, they stood up. And everyone else gave us a little round of applause. And the guy said, the American guy said, oh, that wasn't so hard, was, was it? And the American guy said, look, I, he pointed up to the windows on the edge of the gymnasium thing, the hall, and he says, oh, I can see uh, demons looking through um, those windows, and they're all, they're all distraught now because they thought that there was a possibility that you wouldn't stand up, but... 
you've proved them wrong and now they're all crying and gnashing their teeth up there in the windows. So yeah, it was all pretty freaking fucking crazy stuff. Terrible stuff for a kid to go through. I would never, ever force any child to be pushed into any religion. I mean, it's just ridiculous, you know. It should be outlawed, that kind of thing. And actually, um, having said that, well, I should say, <clears throat> the next thing I remember was getting picked up by my mother in the car from this camp in the last day and, um, and uh, being very, very quiet the whole way, going all the way home, just being quiet. And I remember later my mother commented on that, that I was very quiet the whole trip back home. Uh, and the reason why she commented on that was because later um, there was an investigation into that camp. There was an investigation that went on. Um, now I think the investigation was next year's camp. And by then I'd gotten out of the school. I didn't want to go to that school anymore. I said to my mother and father, I don't want to go, I want to go to just a normal public school from now on. And so my third year of high school, I was in a normal, I was in with the riffraff at the, uh, the public school there, the biggest, biggest public school in Obelisk there. And, um, but I remember, yeah, the year after, the year after I'd left, they had another camp and the same speaker was there, that, that same American high pressure religious guy was there, born again guy, and um, there was a, an investigation by the media, I don't know if, how, how much further it went, but the media definitely investigated it and interviewed the principal, and because apparently I'd heard from <clears throat> some of the other kids that I, I think I must have met them at the train station maybe, some of my old friends from the old school, I'd met up with them at the train or whatever, or, or walking down the street. Um, yeah, some kids had gone really crazy the next, the next camp after the one I'd been to. So if, if the camp I went to wasn't bad enough, the next one was even worse. So yeah, apparently it was like really, really bad, like a really high pressure. So yeah. And I remember that, that interview, I remember the, um, the headmaster and the, per the people like the, you know, the local news were saying, oh, you know, do you agree with any of these allegations is any of this true why were these kids vomiting why were they vomiting you know because apparently some of the kids were so stressed by the high pressure of the whole thing that they were actually vomiting and um and that fucking principal fuck i'd love to give him i'd love to punch him in the face he was like oh yeah no well you know that's debatable as to where, why these kids were vomiting there was a vending machine there that was emptied quite a few times, you know, um, they ate a lot of snacks, so it could have been this, it could have been that, and um, yeah, so that was that. Yeah, so that's the story of, of uh, probably the crescendo of, of, of where I stood with the Christian, with being a Christian, really. Um, yeah, I guess I was, I was screwed up for a long time after that with my thoughts on God and what I believed and all that kind of stuff. I was quite screwed up for a long time after that. Probably a year, probably two years maybe. I was kind of, didn't feel particularly right in the head about the whole thing. But yeah, I think that's probably enough. I mean, this is gonna be a very long video, but yeah, this is, that's probably enough about that. Um, Hopefully that kind of explains a bit to some people why I feel the way I do about Christianity, why I would never uh, push religion onto a child. Uh, I think that's terrible. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I gotta get back, I think. They're gonna be wondering where I am. This is a really nice spot here.